In today's video, I am going to be taking a look and walking you through this mountain of beautifully folded and neatly piled quilts to join me as we have a trunk show of my 2021 quilting mix. I am Tom, I am the Colorblind Quilter, and this is my online trunk show of everything that I made in 2021. Now, as you can see, I keep it beautifully organized, very neat and tidy in this massive mountain of quilts, but this is everything that I made last year. Now, I thought it would be fun to go through and just show you them because the bulk of this pile are pattern tests that I took part in, and then the rest are my own patterns and then just general things that I was doing last year. But rather than just showing you the finished quilt, I thought it might be fun to share some progress shots of the quilts and tell you a little bit about the patterns as we view the pictures. So let's take a look and see what I've been up to. So first up we have the Archer's Atlas quilt and this is by Life with Eleanor and this was my very first pattern test. This was a lot of fun to make and it was nice and easy to make. It's a basic block and you make so many of them to construct the size of quilt that you want. There are instructions for five sizes in the pattern and it's great for chain piecing. It's very chain piecing friendly which I love. So you can see here's the full size quilt here. Turned out really nice. These colours are really nice and bright and I think the dark background really helps to make things pop. And of course, my favourite colour, orange, takes centre stage in this design. And I made a small throw which was 65 inches square. Next up is the Minimal Medallion quilt, and this is by Cynthia Muir of Ah Quilting. Now, as soon as I saw this quilt, I was desperate to test this, and I sent an email saying, please, please include me in this test, and Cynthia was very good enough to include me. I had a lot of fun with this. There are a lot of colours in here, so this was quite a challenge for my colour blindness. However, with the help of some friends I came together. Of course I have to have a picture with my little doggy because no quilt is complete without a picture of my little doggy. I did though make the mistake of washing this quilt before I took my pictures and it had that crumpled look which I don't particularly like. Fun little side though, one of the corners of this quilt looked a bit like a space invader from the video game so that picture just made me laugh when I saw it. But this is a square 62 inch by 62 inch throw or lap size quilt requiring 13 colours to make and it was a lot of fun and a lot of construction methods in here that I had never tried before so it was lots of reading for cutting anything. Once I got a hang of it it was really fun and really simple to make. And I'm actually considering making a wall hanging for this using the centre motif because I think that would make a really really nice background. Next up is the Adeline K quilt and this is by Brie Tuttle of Brie T Quilt Designs and this comes in three sizes, baby, small throw and large throw. Again, this is a square quilt. I made a baby size version of this quilt and this was actually a quilt that a friend requested. So she picked the fabrics here and went for ultra marine and then that bright yellow sparkly star fabric. Now when I initially saw these, I thought, oh dear, these, these don't go together. However, once I made the quilt and saw the two-tone and the secondary patterns in it, I absolutely loved this. And indeed, it was quite amusing because when I spoke to the, the quilt designer, she said that when she saw my fabric pull, she wasn't herself convinced that it was going to work. But as soon as she saw it, she loved it. This has a really fun elephant print on the back of it, which is just lovely for a baby quilt. And then with some of the leftover fabric, I actually ended up being able to make two pillowcases, which I've never made before. So these were just one of the quilt blocks, and then they were backed with fabric that was folded to make the kind of envelope style opening pillows. But you can see there's a really sharp contrast between the ultramarine and the yellow fabric and it creates a really striking secondary pattern. And it came together really quickly, so this was, this was a good fun pattern to make. Next up we have the crystalline quilt, or crystalline quilt, depending on how you want to say that. And this is by Amber at Alderwood Studio. Now this was another quilt pattern that as soon as I saw this I just really, really wanted to try this out. The secondary patterns in this really are very special in the way that they create so many different designs depending on how you choose to focus on the quilt. Now I wanted to go for blues and teals in this design because I wanted this for my bedroom which was going to be decorated with a teal theme. So I picked the colours and then set about making half rectangle triangles for the very first time. And that was confusing at first, so it's always a good idea to make a little tester block. So I did indeed make myself a little tester block of half rectangle triangles and they were completely wrong. But then I figured it out that I was using my ruler wrong, so it was nothing to do with the pattern, it was complete and utter user error. Once I figured that out, that became a doddle to make and all my points matched beautifully. This was also the first time that I ever attempted a quote swirl and I ironed all the top beautifully to take all my 
five pictures and then swirled it, took the picture and then went to fold it and it was completely crumpled. And I found myself sitting there saying, why on earth does anybody want to do quilt swirls? Because you just end up with a crinkled quilt. But again, this took just a little bit of thinking, but once I figured it out, it was no problem. It was dead easy to make. And this quilt I am actually going to be making bigger. This is the throw size quilt, which is 54 by 72 by. I actually want to turn this into twin size. And it's very easy to do because I just need to make more blocks and then attach them to the side and the bottom of the quilt. And this is one of my favorite quilts that I've made so far. Next up is Reflection by that gay quilter, Trevor Witteau. Now Trevor was raising money to go to school in France and so he set himself the task of writing 20 patterns in a year. And I believe this was the second pattern that he had written. This is made up of triangles. So I signed up for this and was like, yes, I can do this. And then when I realized the volume of triangles that were involved in this, I very quickly thought, oh, it is a paper template pattern, but it can be made using rulers. So I very promptly bought myself an acrylic ruler to make this a lot easier because paper templates and myself do not get on. The way that the pattern is, it makes me feel like you're standing looking up at the sky. So I wanted waves of color running through this quilt. So I picked really nice, bright yellow, orange, pomegranate, and a nice blue and had them running in waves out of the quilt. And again, I think that in the end result was beautiful. I will note that I did end up sewing this upside down and had to pick apart very many triangle blocks to fix this because I laid it out looking in one direction, but then sat down looking at it in the opposite direction at my sewing machine and picked the pieces up in the wrong order. So that was silly. And that was a lot of fun unpicking that. But this, this quilt is huge. It is a 69 by 96 inch quilt, so it is massive. Next up, we have the Born This Way quilt by the Athena Workshop, who is Megan Lopez. And this was pattern number 11 for her. This is a throw size 68 inch square quilt consisting of a heart block and then a sunshine block. This is a pride quilt. So there are different versions of this and each of these flags represents a different pride flag from three stripes up to seven stripes. So I chose to do the seven stripe flag and I picked my colors and was having a bit of difficulty with the color blindness, getting the appropriate colors. So Megan was very kind to help me. And I actually ended up making this in the same color way that she made her original tester. It was very easy to make. And it was very fun to make. And actually I had never considered that you could make hearts out of the blocks that this is constructed of. When I was taking this picture of the full size quilt, it took me forever to get this to lie flat because it was just a tiny little breeze and it kept whipping the corner up before I could get a picture standing on a ladder in my driveway. So it did take me like 25 minutes to get a flat picture of the quilt. And even then it still looks a bit wrinkled. But this was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed making this. And there was a great Instagram group that went with this, people that were chatting and sharing tips and from around the world. And it was lovely to hear everybody's stories about who they were making this quote for or what charities they were making this quote for to donate to. So that was a really fulfilling test to take part. This is quote number seven, and this is Chromatic Crackle. And this is again by Cynthia Muir of Ah Quilting. And I saw this pattern and was like, if you need testers, please do include me on this because I just loved the look of this. And this actually reminds me of Fourth Rail Bridge, which is a hundred and something year old bridge near where I live. This is a paper template pattern, and I didn't realize it at the time when I signed up for it, but I made some tester blocks and figured it out and it was okay and I was doing fine and then I was also trying to do three other tests at the same time. Got myself into a little bit of a fluster when I was making this. Realized that when you make these blocks, you're supposed to twist them in a certain direction before you trim using a template. And I twisted them in the wrong direction and ended up with 25 blocks that were just very strange and didn't work. And when I laid this out, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working until I realized my mistake. So it was a bit stressful making this one, but purely my own fault for taking on too much at one time. The original quote was written for a rainbow pattern, but I decided that I wanted to go with just three simple colors here. I really wanted a symmetrical wave loop down the front of the quilt and I really really love the pomegranate in this quilt and how it just pops with the sash. This is also the first time I ever made a roll up picture of a quilt. I don't know what quite possessed me to do it but I thought it would look a bit cool and actually it's pretty cool. And here's the finished quilt and I really really enjoy this and I can't wait to get this quilted. I have quite a few ideas for shattered lines or lines that echo the sashing through the middle of the blocks to get this quilted and then I think using that pomegranate color as a binding will really frame this very nicely. So I can't wait to get this one quilted. Up next is number eight, and this is Simplicity, and this is also for Alderwood Studio, and this is a beginner's pattern. Now, when I looked at this, I thought, well, the baby size would be a lovely wall hanging for backdrops to when I'm filming. Now, Amber made this in a very kind of neutral, pastel-y, pastel 
palette, but I decided that I wanted something that was a little bit more vibrant, going from warm to cool. So I went for these reds that went into oranges that went to very cool blues before finally ending up in that lovely dark blue. So this did take a bit of work with my color blindness, and I did have to get a bit of help to get this right because some of the shades were just too close together and I was having a little bit of difficulty differentiating them. Again, this is another one that I was hanging off a ladder in my driveway trying to get a picture of on a sunny day. And I have a, a great idea for doing this with a, a 60 degree triangle quilt design all over. And then I'm trying to think what kind of binding would suit this to really frame that because it needs to counter the red on the right, but it also needs to counter the blue on the left. So I'm thinking something really light and pale here would look great. Or even just using the same color as the sashing because then it will appear to make those quilt blocks float. But again, this is a really fun quilt to make. So this next design is again for Alderwood Studio. This is the third pattern that I tested for Amber and it's called Summer Solstice. And this was a pattern that I was a little wary of when I took it on because it was curved piecing, but I was determined that I was going to give curved piecing a try and this was my opportunity to do so. As soon as I saw this in the email when she sent it out, I just had this vision of snowy mountain peaks with a lake below it and somebody had thrown a stone in the water and it, the colors were rippling out across the water. Very beautiful. And then the reflection of the mountains below the ripples. So I had this quilt pattern color palette in mind and I was just struggling ever so slightly to get a brown that worked. So my partner helped me with that and I think that it turned out beautifully. There are quite a few bias seams in this quilt, very large pieces of bias seams. So it was a little bit nerve wracking to sew them without stretching them, but lots of pins, taking my time and going slow and it turned out without any problems. I also used a background that I might not necessarily have thought about before, but it was a pale blue background and I really liked how it contrasted with it everything else and it really made everything else pop out. The mountains really, really look great with that background. So I'm really pleased with this quilt. It took a little bit of time to get it. I had to make a test block when it came to the curved piecing. But actually, once I had done it, I realized that it really was not quite as scary as I thought it was. And this, again, is one of my one of my favorite quilts that I've made. And I can see myself doing lots of lines mimicking the angles of the mountains here and then perhaps venturing into some curved quilting in the middle there to create ripples across the lake. So so yeah, I really look forward to finishing this one as well. Next up, we have the Beach Quilt, and this is by a Pear Tree Designs Original. And this is pattern number 106. So this one, I wanted to do something a little bit more fun with my colors for this. So I decided to have a competition on Instagram to get people to vote for what I wanted to do. The options were uh, Prussian and Clementine, so navy and orange, or Horizon and Steel, light blue and gray. And the overwhelming majority voted for Prussian and Clementine, which I really was pleased about because I wanted to make the orange. But I decided that I was going to go for the blue and the grey as well and order the fabric at the same time. I was making a baby size version of this in the two color way. The pattern does come in a two color or a four color way. The pear tree designs were very specific about what color way and what sizes we were testing for this pattern. Pattern is fantastic to follow, it's really easy. It took no time at all with the methods that she included in the pattern. I really like this, she, this was a great test to do. She was a fantastic designer. Her name is Lindsay and she included lots of information about it and how to finish it, colorways and different samples of colorways. And she was one of the first quilters that I had tested for that used pre-quilt coloring pages to help you pick your fabrics for this. So I really enjoyed this, making this, and this is going to make a beautiful wall hanging for a video backdrop. Now, this next quilt is Rainbow Fields by Cat Lyle Designs. If I'm saying that right. And this quilt is one that you might recognize as the backdrop for my last couple of videos. This is Rainbow Designer. You can see that there's a warm colorway and there is a cold color or colder colorway to this, the blues versus the red. Now, this was again a challenge for me with the color blindness, the reds and the oranges in this, getting the right shades that contrasted enough and then getting blues that had enough contrast in them. But I was really happy with how this turned out. It's a really bright, fun, happy quilt. I had lots of fun photographing this one, including a top-down shot from my sewing machine, which I've used in some of my handouts and worksheets and presentations on my videos. And I only recently realized about a year after taking the picture that the top of the sewing machine is dusty and I never actually dusted it before I took the picture. However, these things, you know. So yeah, this is a fun quilt to make. It's a 32 by 35, so it's a, a baby size quilt and easy to follow, easy to make, lots of strip piecing in this one and it does make a beautiful backing. I have grand designs to quilt this all over with a divided diamond 
pattern and a nice light thread that will show up on these colors. So look forward again to finishing that one. Next up is my second pattern test for Trevor Whittle or that decoder as he is known. And this is called a four patch of four patches. Now I was asked to do this for him. This was pattern number seven or eight for him that he had written and he asked me if I would be interested in taking part. Of course I said yes, because I really liked the design. This one is a little strange in the colors because I had a colorway in mind and I picked it and did a pre-quilt mock-up and really liked it, thought it looked great. So went ahead and ordered the fabric and cut everything up. But when it came to making it, I realized that I didn't quite like the stone color in it. Whilst it looked great on the computer screen, it didn't really work in real life. I don't think it looks bad, but I just, I wish I had just picked something different to use in those four patches. However, it was a fun quilt to make. There's some things in here that I'd never tried before. Trevor was very imaginative in his quilt designs and writes very funny patterns that are very easy to follow. I sadly wasn't able to finish this pattern on time for him because I was ill, but I did eventually get it done. I haven't a clue how I'm going to quilt this, but I'm sure that there is some kind of repeating design or all over quilting design that will really make his pattern pop. That was pattern number two for him. Next up is Lida and Lizzie, and this is a two in one quilt pattern by the quilty architect Matthew. Now, when I saw this, I instantly had this idea for this kind of moody, desaturated, greyish color screen with just a little hint of color in the middle. And in this, I used greys, greens, and then the little pop of color comes from Kona Wheat in the middle there. And I really like how this graduates from the dark outside to that little pop of color in the middle. This is a two in one quilt pattern. So when you make one of these quilts, you end up with pieces that then allows you to make the second one. And these finish 51 by 40 inches. So these are a nice size for a baby quilt or they are a nice size for a wall hanging. And my plan was to use these as wall hangings, backdrops for my video. Now, at the time of making this, I got started and then took ill with a kidney infection and sadly was never able to complete this. So I am at the stage where my strips are together but they haven't been sewn into the quilt top. This quilt pattern is not complicated to make, it's, it's easy and Matthew's pattern is incredibly simple to follow. He writes a really clear and easy pattern. The pieces are just quite small so they are a little fiddly so this is a great skill builder for getting a consistent seam and pressing straight strips that are fairly small. As I said, I haven't quite finished this yet. This is waiting to be finished and I do plan to get this finished in the first half of this year, but I've included my mock-ups from pre quote to show you what my design will look like when I'm finished. Next up is A Year of Blocks and this is by Natalia Bonner. Now I saw this pop up that she was looking for testers for a project for one of her online courses that she does. And I thought I would apply for this because I like the idea of doing it. And I didn't expect to get picked because Natalia has quite a large following. So I, I assumed her team would be inundated. But to my surprise, I was picked and I was really happy to be picked. Now this is a kind of sampler style quilt and what's happening is that how you're sharing this as a block a month and then they do she gives you ideas on how to quilt it and various quilting patterns that you can use for it. So it's not really about the construction of it, it's about the quilting of it. There are 12 blocks and they makes a 50 by 60 inch quilt with sashing between the blocks and then between the rows. There was curved piecing in here. So this is my second time doing curved piecing and those curved pieces were quite small. So that again was challenging. There was lots of bias seams in here, half square triangles, geese and things like that. So there was things in there that I had never done before. When it came together, the quilt was really, the effect is really stunning and I was really impressed by how this looks. And I went for colors here that I wouldn't necessarily have used. I sort of emulated her color scheme. She had gone for red, coral, orange, green, and aqua. So I went for shades of those colors just to try something outside of my comfort zone because I wouldn't necessarily go for such pastel colors, but I was really surprised by how well that this turned out and how well these colors went together. So I was really, really very pleased with this and really enjoyed making this. The instructions were dead simple to follow and a doddle to make. Next up is a 60 degree triangle based table runner. I have this idea for a hexagon based table runner for my dining room table because we have hexagon tiles on the wall. So I really want to bring the hexagon theme into the room. So the inspiration for this came from a free pattern that Krista Moser, I hope that's how you say that, had produced where you create strips and then you cut them up into 60 degree triangle. And I created this kind of table runner. I was planning on using it for Christmas this year. It also came together to make this really nice kind of hexagon shape. And I think it would make a really nice nice Christmas tree skirt. So I have visions and plans to 
make one of those this year based on that hexagon style design. However, when I came to quilt this, I had a scrap of red fabric left over from the previous Christmas and was laying it all out and realized that it was short by just three quarters of an inch. So as you can see here, I tried to get it at every single angle on this fabric to make it work and it just didn't work. So sadly it wasn't finished, but I will have it finished for Christmas 2022 because I have a much bigger scrap of fabric now that I can use. But this was fun and I set this as a challenge to myself where I wanted to see if I could figure this out using my own skills and math. And it came together really simply and really easy. So I definitely recommend you check out Krista's channel. She has amazing videos and tutorials and patterns that you can buy and follow along. In 2021, I did have a goal to write two or three of my own patterns. This was the second pattern that I wrote. It's called a Christmas runner and it's a table runner. And this is made up of two blocks one comprising of half square triangles and the other comprising of squares and it comes together to make this table runner. And it's easy to make it longer or shorter just by altering the number of blocks in it. Now when it comes to Christmas stuff, most stuff is reds and golds and things like that. But I had in my head that I wanted a red and grey theme. I like the idea of the combination of the red and the grey together. So I found these beautiful fabrics that really really went together very nicely but I didn't want to waste them because I couldn't get very much of them because stocks were low so I decided to use some scraps from the previous Christmas that I had left over in a red a navy and a Kona bone so I made my tester and then finished it and was very happy and was taking pictures and just adjusting my pattern and then realized that I had actually sewn part of it the wrong way around and all three of the star based blocks so that was a bit of a whoops a daisy. However, that was a good test for me for my own pattern testing. I had a lot of fun making the actual quilt and then used the 45 degree crosshatch design when it came to quilting this. I also used a pale gray background for the actual quilt that was used in my pattern shots. And I really like how it looks. It makes the reds and the darker gray pop out. And then when you frame it with the same red that's used in the blocks for binding, it really comes together. And I was really pleased with the outcome of this. So that pattern is available for sale. I'll leave a link below. And you don't have to make it for Christmas though. You can make it in any kind of fabrics and it would look great. So check that out. Next up is an unexpected pattern test. I had not planned on doing this. I just saw it randomly on Instagram one morning and thought, oh, I quite fancy that. And it's to make a Christmas stocking. And this is by Nicola Bates of Little Sister Sewing. And this comes in two sizes, a large and a smaller one. So I opted to make the smaller one with the fabric that I had. I've never made anything like this before, so it was fun, but it did involve making a tiny little star with very small flying geese. So that was quite a challenge. I used a Kona bone and I had in my head that I wanted to do a red 45 degree cross hatch across the boot because I thought that would look really nice. So I used a red 30 weight Gutterman thread and quilted the back. And I'm so glad that I only quilted the back because as soon as I saw it, I hated it. It just did not work at all. The 45 degree quilt design was perfect. It looked really great and gave nice texture to the stocking, but the red thread was a big no no. So on the front, I used a creamy color that blended into the background and just therefore just made texture on the quilt. It was really fun to make this one. As I said, it comes in two sizes and it's a paper pattern that you print out and then cut your pieces and sew together. Now, next up, we have my pattern, which was behind the blocks. And this was a sew along Santa quilt that we made this year. Now, I actually started this during the pandemic last year, and the idea is that I made 12 blocks. Every block was based on squares and rectangles, and it was designed to help people build their skills as quilters, going from simpler blocks like a four patch, working our way all the way up to antique tiles, bento boxes, and city street blocks, and Pennsylvania blocks. And so they were increasing in difficulty. I had a lot of fun making this video series. Quilt colors that I picked, the red and the blue and the green, all really nicely contrast. It's a really fun color palette and I'm really pleased with it. I enjoyed sewing this quilt, it was lots of fun and I really did want to finish this and have it quilted for the end of the video. However, just trying to produce a video and produce a quilt at the same time is very time consuming. So I just had to make allowances. I wouldn't get it quilted for the video. But this turned out really nicely and the colors really go well. I used Kona Dove for the sashing and borders on this. And I think that it looks really nice. It's a little bit different. It maybe doesn't contrast quite enough against the white that's in the blocks, 
but I think there's enough contrast there for you to see it. And I'm really excited to be working on season two of this series just now, which is going to be based on triangles and geese. So that's coming out in May 2022. If you want to take part in this, there's a playlist link in the description that you can get all the videos, get all the free patterns and everything that you need to make this quilt. So I hope you'll check it out and so along. Next up is another Christmas pattern and it's another one of my patterns. This was pattern number three that I wrote in 2021 and this is a Christmas present. Now I had this idea that I wanted to make a Christmas quilt that was quick and easy to sew that could be great for a gift or it could be great if you wanted something to cuddle up on a cold winter's night at Christmas. So I had this idea of making Christmas presents with fabric and then adding a star into it which I shamelessly stole from the Born This Way quilt where they included one star with all the love hearts in it. I wanted to include one little star because it felt nice and Christmassy. I made this in two colorways, red with gold sashing, navy blue with gold sashing. Again I used Kona Dove as a background for this because I didn't want to use white because it would feel cold but I wanted something that had just a nice gentle contrast and I feel like the light grey really contrasted nicely. Very difficult to find fabrics that are not white that contrast with the gold fabric that I used for the bosom. Now this was my own pattern that I wrote and I did make a tiny mistake when I was writing the pattern in that you can see my point of my bows which are flying geese are cut off and I rewrote the pattern so that that wouldn't be cut off but when I was looking at this when I was quoting it I decided decided that I actually liked the top of the points being cut off because it made it look like the top of the bow was flattened out like a bow would look in when you looked at it from the side. So it was an accidental mistake that actually turned out better than I thought. However, the pattern if you're making it does give you points on your bows. This is really simple, so very chain piecing friendly and I really like this. I went for just a straightforward grid quilting on this because I didn't want to detract too much from the design and I also didn't want to make the quilt too stiff because the idea that this was a cuddling quilt so I wanted it to have a really soft flexible texture so the quilting lines are three inches apart to give it that and of course we had to have a shot of my little doggy Eddie who took so much treats to get him to sit patiently like that and look at the camera for me on my quilt but you know it was worth it because it's a beautiful shot. Next up is a challenge that I set myself when I first started quilting I made a baby quilt using a pastel pack of fat quarters and did not have a clue what I was doing. I used a piece of wood and a rotary cutter to cut rectangles. I had no idea about colour placement or anything like that. I've kept that quilt up for years and finally thought I'm going to remake this and see what I can do with it. So I picked it all apart and then trimmed it all because it was very frayed. So trimmed it all into rectangles and then had this idea of making a half bar jello with it. Now these colours were extraordinarily difficult for me to work with with my colour blindness. Many of them look exactly the same so I looked like I had just big blocks of one colour. I did have to get a lot of help from my partner sorting these out and it took a lot of labels and pieces of masking tape to make sure that I didn't get things mixed up. I still managed to get things mixed up and had to unpick and re-sew. But it was the first time I'd made that kind of bar jello effect and I really liked it. When it came to quilting this, I just wanted very simple straight lines across it so that it flowed with the bar jello and it worked out very nicely. But I used a blue cuddle fabric on the back. It was very stretchy, very stretchy indeed. And when it came to binding it, this was wobbling and stretching all over the place. So I'm really not happy with how the binding turned out. It's got quite a wave in it and it's quite uneven on the back. I wasn't making this for anybody in particular. This was just kind of an experiment with my skills and color picking and see what I could turn that poor quilt that's been sitting for 13 years into. So while the finish is not perfect, it's still, I think it looks good. And I think I'd actually recreate this, but using different colors um, and perhaps pair it to make the full bar jello wave. It's a nice little size baby quilt and it, I use a really puffy batting for this. And you know, it was also nice to reflect on the very first thing that I made and remake it using the skills that I have now to compare just how much I've grown as a quilter and how much my skills have grown. And actually looking back at it, when I was unpicking it, I was checking and quite a few of my quarter inch seams were fairly accurate. So so I was quite pleased that it was not as bad as I initially thought it was. Then the last quilt I have for you, my little quilt trunk show, is I'm calling this an orange peel design. So it's just a basic checkerboard. This is made of five inch yellow and five inch white squares sewn together to make a chessboard effect. It's a baby sized quilt. I love the yellow in this quilt, it's really nice. I put a thin yellow border on just to frame this, just to make it a little bit bigger. Now the actual purpose of this wasn't to make the quilt, the actual purpose of this was to try curved quilting but using a walking foot. So I did an orange peel design. What I did with this was I got a bowl that just happened to be the perfect diameter for the size of quilt blocks that I had made and I put it on the seam and then moved it until 
until I got the size of the orange peel that I wanted. And I drew in this with pencil. I basically drew all my lines and then I challenged myself to do this in one continuous quilting line without cutting threads. And I managed it. And I can't remember how I did it, but I managed it and I was so pleased that I did it. It really turned out very nicely. I really liked the orange peel design and I was amazed by how easy it was to do curved design but using a walking boot. One thing I don't particularly like though was I didn't really know what to do in the borders, so I just mirrored out the orange peel. And I don't actually think it works. I think it, it looks like a bit like a scallop and I don't like that. I think what I would have been better doing was some straight lines to frame it and think that would look really good. But actually, once I've washed this, all the pencil marks came out. So once I've buried the quilting threads, this is a ready-made gift for anybody that I know that's going to be having a baby anytime soon. All the patterns that I've mentioned during this video, there will be a link to my website below. And on my website, you will find links to all the patterns and the designers so that if there's any of these that you fancy trying or you want to make yourself, you can get links to buy their patterns. And for my patterns, I've put links to my videos and links to download them. And for the behind the block sampler coat, I've put a link to the playlist so you can get started and make your own behind the block quilt. So that was my 2021 online trunk show. And first time I've ever done anything like this. And I hope you enjoyed seeing all the pictures and the progress shots of everything that I was making last year. As you can see though, these are a lot of unfinished projects. They're not quite UFOs yet, but they are working projects or whips. And I now have 15 of them to deal with in this pile. So in the next video, I am going to be sharing some tips and advice on how I'm going to tackle this pile of whips and things that you can do to help you if you have a mountain of quilts like this that are just waiting to be finished. And then I'm going to follow this video up at the end of 2022 with a video telling you how I got on with this pile of quilts and letting you know my successes and hopefully there'll be no failures. If you enjoyed this video why not give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you'll get notified next time I release a new video on this channel. So take care and I will see you next time.